Welcome back to Brands Hatch, where the fourth round of the Kit Car Championship took place earlier today. Championship front runner Matthew Lewis took no part in the race, having damaged his car on the way out of the assembly area to form upon the grid. Andy Hiley and Ian Kempson were on the front row of the grid, but as the lights went out, Daniel Ferguson had trouble getting his low cost off the line. The rest of the field scattered to avoid him, but Ferguson was forced to retire before his race had really begun. After a blistering start from 8th on the grid, Stephen Lansley was in the lead at the end of the first lap, but Polman Hiley who took the position with a brave move around the outside at Surtees on the second lap of the race. Exiting onto the Brabham straight for the sixth time, John Moore's Silver Phoenix developed a mechanical problem, forcing him to retire whilst running in a strong third position. A coolant blanking plug spectacularly blew on Paul Boyd's Eclipse, but Andy Hiley's Tay Deck held out to take the victory. So, Hiley victorious in round four, but at Mallory Park for round three, it had been a different story. He was leading the race when a worsening misfire and oil pressure concerns caused him to retire from the race, handing victory to John Moore. Class wins went to Rob Johnston and to Ian Kempson, and it's Kempson in his Class B car that lines up on pole position for this one, with Hiley alongside him. Row two has on the inside Paul Boyd, but Daniel Ferguson missing from the outside, as you can see there. Race getting underway, great start for Andy Hiley. Ian Kempson pretty much much slow away there as they head down towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. It looks like John Moore has fixed his problems from yesterday, making good progress there into the right hand. But look, Hiley can see already in the distance is beginning to escape from this field. Moore up the inside of Rob Johnston, that 82 car on the inside of Druids, very tight, but Johnston gives him racing room as they head down into Graham Hill Bend now. I think that's um, Lancely up in front of Moore, and Moore has a little tiny look up the inside, but not quite close enough to make a move. Now he does get the slipstream and pull past, heading down into Surtees for the first time, and Boyd is still running in second position, but Andy Hiley has sort of romped off already at the end of this first lap. Rob Johnston is now himself trying to look to get past Hiley as he sweeps through clearways. He runs a little bit wide. Lancely taking a very tight line there. That may compromise his momentum down the start-finish straight. Indeed, Johnston is in the toe and he looks to the inside. Lancely covers the line, switches back to the outside now for Paddock Hill Bend. That could give him more momentum through and out towards Druids, but not this time. He's not going to be close enough. So up the hill they go then, remember this is a multi-class race here, you've got the class A, B and C class, but they're all, uh, although different specifications, pretty similar in performance. Two non-starters for this race, Matthew Lewis, we saw his problems earlier on, and Guy Hussey as well. Highly though it is that leads then in his class A car, and it's the next class A car of Paul Boyd in this eclipse that he's sharing with uh, Clive Hudson this season. He is in second place, but here is the battle for the back, it's the 82 car of Rob Johnson, one of the class C cars that is next through, that's the Cyana MX500R, just behind the 5 car of our championship leader at the moment, and that is Ian Kempson. Over the Brabham Strait, yeah, we saw Kempson just sneak past into Druids last time around as he recovers after that abysmal start. Rob Johnson still looking racy though, trying to hang on all the way around the outside there at Paddock Hill Bend. He hasn't made his stick, Kempson had the inside line, we saw the outside at Paddock Hill Bend used many times in the low cost race, but um, Johnson, sorry, not able to make it work this time as Kempson now is going to start attacking Lancely, I'd imagine, if he can close in on him as they drop through Graham Hill Bend, but Rob Johnson is looking fairly racy as well, running a little bit wide there, I think it was John Moore, he was all four wheels over the line, we've already seen exclusions for that, oh, big contact there, that was uh, Kempson getting right up on the back of Lancely, just sort of misjudged where Lancely's car was there, I think. Yeah, there doesn't appear to be any damage to either Ian Kempson's car or that of uh, Stephen Lansley as well. Lansley in Class C, and it's Kempson, as we say, in Class B, but it's the Class A cars leading the way then in the first three positions. Highly it is then in the Tay Deck up front. Second place is still Boyd. Third place is John Moore, but this battle continues in a change there because now it's Rob Johnson that's got through into P5 in the black car, the number 82 machine. He climbs the hill, the driver from Newcastle, uh, making his way into the right hand of Kempson now trying to go back around the outside of him at the hairpin and another car about to come into play as well that may well be Chris Scopes as well in the Fisher Fury 
type of car that we also see out in RGB as well in its bike engine guys and the cars one of the types of car that uh, ran so strongly in uh, RGB in the early years of that championship back in 2001 but Johnston makes up another place there at the expense of Lansley he now goes fourth Kempson swings to the outside now to see if he can get past Lansley on the run down the Brabham Strait. Uh, I was going to say it's good work from Chris Scopes because he started down on 11th, but with three non-starters uh, not there in front of him, that's made his job a little bit easier. So here is Kempson in the slipstream of Lansley, heading down into Paddock Hill Bend once again. Lansley holds the inside line. Kempson once again will try and get momentum up towards Druids. It's not going to work. In fact, they've all closed in a little bit on Rob Johnson. He's going to be need to be defensive in into Druids he is and Lansley once again hugs the inside and Kempson once again tries to go all the way around the outside but these four unmoved at the moment and I think they've got a fifth car joining back there I think that may possibly be Nigel Brown right behind them yes it was Nigel Brown who was the runner up at Mallory Park behind John Moore and a change there because Lansley seems to have lost a lot of ground there I wonder if there's a problem for him coming out to Graham Hill Bend he loses not one but two places there first Ian Kempson goes through then it's Rob Johnson I think is it those oh, sorry Chris Scopes of course that's following him Rob Johnson already up ahead Lansley then losing a couple of spots so he now goes down into seventh position Nigel Brown in eighth position is about to challenge him as well I think as they come up over the line once more Chris Scopes in the 39 car looks to the outside line for Paddock Hill Bend can he go around the outside of Ian Kempson yes he can so uh, the 39 car of Scopes goes through that's one of the class C cars uh, Kempson of course in class B this is the battle then for second position with Paul Boyd ahead of John Moore sweeping through clearways now and uh, well Moore's closed in quite a bit on Boyd who runs a little bit wide through clearways and that's going to give Moore a good chance as they come over the Brabham Strait as we saw earlier Moore was quite a way behind Boyd who sort of made a break for second place and was running fairly comfortably as we go on board with John Moore then up the ease they're having a little faint look up the inside into Paddock Hill Bend but he's not going to make it through there not quite close enough but he certainly has the pace over Boyd I'd imagine as they come up into Druids again he's looking up the inside again Boyd not hugging the apex as much as he would possibly like. Is that going to get more alongside down into Graham Hill? It is, but he's going to have the outside line, but he's done it. He's gone through on the brakes there. So good work from John Moore to make up that position past Boyd. Now, I don't think he has anywhere near enough time to um, to catch Andy Hiley, who's romping away at the front of this. But that was a good move there from John Moore up into second position. Of course, Moore can hang on to the hope that what happened at Mallory Park will happen again in that Andy Hiley uh, may not be able to complete the race but there's certainly no signs of that the Tay Deck 4 Andy Hiley looking altogether stronger this weekend John Moore there second place in his Silver Phoenix third place to the Eclipse then of Paul Boyd I just wonder if he's got some problems with that maybe the engine on this still what it's what still quite a warm evening just beginning to uh, get a little bit too warm maybe here's the fourth place car then that's Rob Johnson in the Cyana but then uh, Chris Scopes in the Fisher Fury only just behind him now and that is a Class C battle as well this is the battle for Class C honours and Chris Scopes having a look there as they went up towards Druids that time but Johnston holds on well, while Scopes was battling with uh, Lansley and Kempson and the like, Rob Johnston pulled out quite a big advantage. But as we can see, Scopes has really reeled that back in. But they haven't been able to reel in Andy Hiley, who comes across the finish line to take the victory in this kit car championship race. Coming home in second place. Well, that's very close, in fact. John Moore delighted to take that position. Arm aloft and uh, coming home in fourth place there is Rob Johnston. So he'll be mildly pleased with that I'd imagine as they all stream across the finish line there battles going on right throughout the end of the field so here are the results Andy Hiley took the win 7.6 seconds he finished ahead of John Moore with Paul Boyd only two tenths well one and a half tenths of a second behind him it was Nigel Brown who finished in eighth we saw him joining the battle but not quite making it up Lee Middleton was the only non-finisher and three non-starters as we saw earlier on the most important of those being Matthew Lewis OK, Andy Harley, two wins in the day for the kit car. You must be really pleased with how it's going now. Uh, I'm very pleased with how it's going. Um, actually, the first race today, it was touch and go whether we were going to finish because it wasn't running right. We didn't know why. Um, we managed to pull it off. And the second one, well, it worked properly, so I was well chuffed. Yeah. 